in tonight for the gala. It's at the Delta Hotel. I'm so excited. So this is how my eyebrows look before I grew them out a bit. <laughs> and she's gonna start, so I gotta hold my eyebrows up. Strawberry um, oh. Yeah, strawberry sunshine. I kind of forgot what it was called. And that's it. For Tasha. Okay, that's the card. I am off to Walmart right now to go and print off a picture. So where this panel is being discussed about misunderstood indigenous women. Um, uh, indigenous women actually passed away at this hotel, which is the Delta. And but, um, seriously, her name was Jean Machiskinik. Um, she was a young mother. Shayna Pasapa is speaking on the panel and she's going to be holding the picture I'm going to print out right now. So <clears throat> we can raise awareness and remind people to you know, lest we not forget. So stay tuned and keep watching. My baby hears you guys like look at this. Beauty. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. I'm the picture now. Sorry, I know you can see me in the glare, but what a beautiful woman. Again, Nadine. Nadine Machiskinik. Such a sad reality for my people and even people of every race but mostly you know my people suffer from being missing and murdered I pray for her family and other families every single day going underground Shanna's behind me I don't know if it'll show her but let's Go. Where shall we park? Where shall we park? I don't know where to park. Where's the door? Oh, it's right there. So I think I'm gonna park. Okay, there's so much post. Back up into this parking spot right now. Get the fuck out of my Delta, I know you can see my reflection in Regina. I am doing makeup for Shana Pas Shana Pasapo and it is for the Dress for Success Gala. And it's for women equality, so I had to grab a couple things that I needed. So I'm gonna try the new cat Vondi Locket. Translucent powder, the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Um, I want to try these Vashika Pore. They were a quick buck. Oh, and I got this for spending um, a certain amount of money. And then I got a dip brow for my makeup kit and a pencil for my personal self. This is our setup. Oh, look at our little chairs we picked. <laughs> I love this bathroom. This is the 
this is my makeup. I just did like a natural red lip and my dress and I gotta be <laughs> I gotta be careful because it is a major slit and just a little red Elizabeth Arden purse and yeah. we are going up now. So this is the room we're going in here. And it's just so this is not it this is called mannequin modeling and this is what I did in Saskatoon chicken and rice and veggies for supper. Just a little this housekeeping. Is so good. Just to let you know that we still have a couple of the gift bags available. Purchase a Hilbert and Burke gift bags for you can win sparkle balls mm -hmm. and a Hilbert and Burke brand prize. Oh, here looks so beautiful. The whole setup is beautiful. Like the people that are south of Russia are now at. Um, so when they change the I talked about her and everything. And we like that cheesecake. Oh my god. So each for equal is allowing people not to have to conform. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Livia, one of the things that really struck me in our conversation, and one of the things I think we've been even discussing here tonight, and seeing in some of the video clips, was talking about difference as being a strength rather than seeing our differences as weaknesses. Yeah. Um, well, in my experience as an immigrant woman who came to Canada 20 years ago, I, I started thinking about that maybe I could become more of what society here was expecting me to do. But over the years and over time, I realized that really the strengths of coming from a completely different culture and a completely different professional culture gave me that, got that competitive advantage of being you know, useful here in Canada, useful here in Regina, at doing other things that perhaps when you are from here, um, you cannot do because you cannot see. So uh, in the organization that I have the privilege to lead, uh, for the past 10 years, we have a 98% uh, um, ratio of diversity and most of the people that work in our organization are women and they come from every different corner of the planet. 
one of the things that we really try to do is encourage them and empower them to be who they are. And I encourage and empower everybody, even if you were born here and, and you were raised here, I think that you come with your own strength and with your own ideas and your own personality. So rather than trying to conform as Val uh, was commenting, I think the best thing will be just to be the better version of yourself. So that's what I think strength comes from, rather than trying to be something that you're not. Well, and when we talk about empowerment, Shana, tell us a little bit about POW and about the role that empowerment really plays in POW. So Power Women is a self-defense program specifically for women and girls, so they have that opportunity to um, see what their body's truly capable of. Um, I wish that we could do POW as a recreational thing, but it unfortunately is a need in the community and in order for us to have that space um, we really have to you know own it and take it and that's something that I really like to make sure that the women know is that we have to own our power and that that power is already within so it's not just a self-defense program it has evolved more into um, really realizing what type of body awareness um, we really need to know and that could include the situational awareness where you are how you're feeling how those things affect how you're going to um, uh, react in your your everyday in your everyday life um, and then just kind of you know putting everything together that you have um, to take care of so I mean it just Look it's at like that whole, makeup. Like whole, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional type of training that we've kind of evolved to and even including the community involved, um, getting the elders involved, getting other people to support because it's not just a self-defense program. It's like, it's actually an eye-opener to like how much women are learning, you know, and we have to like make those spaces for women and I wish, you know, that we didn't, but we, we have to, so. Thank you. Can we, when we talk about making space and giving women, you know, that kind of confidence, you described it as battle testing. Um, maybe give me a sense of the I Am Her program that you have been bringing into schools to help do that. Yeah, so I kind of bring a different perspective. I'm so far removed from the corporate world. I've been a teacher for 12, going on 13 years now, so I surround myself with kids every single day, and I've noticed that each generation coming in, it appears as though that there's this epidemic of self-doubt that's taking place in our youth, not just female specifically, but just in our youth uh, in general. So I thought, you know what, if our kids are struggling so much, maybe we just need to get them all together in one room. So I started one workshop where we got girls together and just started talking about real life issues and real unfiltered um, talk around, you know, conversations about confidence and emotional regulation and dethroning these, these false idols of comparison that do exist in our world today and rejecting these lies. So um, the movement itself is called I Am Her, Her standing for hopeful, equipped, resilient, because I think that those are the three key, key pillars that teens really need to learn these days and we as adults need to model for them as well, because first and foremost, hope, I think, hope is a bedrock for everything else. Um, you know, our, our youth are facing adversity, and when you face adversity, even as adults, you have one of two options. You choose hope, or you choose no hope. And what's happening is our youth are erring on the side of no hope, unfortunately. Um, so, and believing in hope doesn't mean dismissing reality. It means, you know, you're, you're tethered to the belief that good will come. That, you know, that there, it, it's gonna turn for you and good will find you. Um, the E, which is equipped, having our youth and our kids really understand that they are fully qualified to achieve the dreams and the goals that they're trying to pursue because they are, they're walking with this posture these days of doing everything and anything they can to avoid bad. Whereas they should be walking with this posture of what can I do to pursue good in life? And the R for resilient, I think that uh, if I was the, the president of every school in this world, I would say that there should be a class on resilience alone because I think resilience is the difference between living and dying. Um, our youth, our kids need to really build that muscle of resilience and there's gonna be times in our lives where we face adversity and it's gonna deflate you, but really teaching our kids how to inflate yourself again and 
how to, to, to bounce forward, and how to really truly grow through the things and the adversity that you go through. Val, you, I mean, aside from being an entrepreneur and a model, if this is something that you've experienced, um, definitely something I did. Once you're there, you just want to kick a door open and hold it open as long as possible because you feel such a privilege. Um, I mean, as a journalist, I felt such a privilege being at CBC and now at the U of R as the venue. I, I just want to keep kicking those doors open. Yeah, so I remember like being a young girl and having people come into my community and being excited that there was somebody different and wanting to learn more about them. And like you would just want to keep learning and have these conversations with them, but at the time I was really young and I was too shy to go talk to them. Um, but now when I go to communities, it's like I want to remember how it felt to be that young girl, you know, like, and that's what I remember when I go there. So I keep that in mind when I'm speaking, when I'm talking, and like I like to approach my relationships with the community as like an auntie or a sister instead of like teaching this militant style of self-defense that's gonna be maybe traumatic to you know some of these young women and girls that have been going through you know some difficult situations and giving them that love and protection and um, like just idea that they're they're valued right and they're worth it because sometimes that's the hard part is to work with somebody who feels like they're not valued and I literally have walked away from some of the communities very like hard, but they would hug me and hold me and tell me that they don't want to go or they don't want me to go, and it was just you know I absolutely love that part, you know the reward after like seeing how confident they feel after you know being able to you know hit the pads and feel how strong they are, or to be able to escape from underneath somebody and be like wow like I'm smaller I'm weaker but I can still do that like that's amazing like you know and that's kind of what I. That fueled me at first, but after I start hearing the stories, right? And hearing like why they need to learn self defense. And then I start learning more, like we exchange this knowledge. And so remembering who that little girl was and remembering who I am now, I try and bring those together and just, you know, create these really strong relationships with them. That's amazing. Thank you. Tell themselves these scary stories, 
they start to believe these scary stories and this comparison that they're seeing on social media. So that'd be the first thing is just to really teach about media literacy. Um, and I think the second thing is, is that I'm sure that everybody in this room, like, we're, we're all battle tested, right? I think that we've all been through something and we've, we've faced adversity and we've survived it. And we can say that we survived it and we've conquered it because we're sitting in these seats right now. But I think it's important that for the youth that are outside of these four walls that we're not gonna connect with them through our, our perfection. To be honest, I think perfection intimidates. I don't think that we're going to connect with them through these like, shiny performances. Um, the way that we're going to connect with our youth is by sharing those experiences. I think what's happening is that our youth are so fixated on, on the why. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? They're fixated on fear, and it's preventing them from moving forward. So I think for us, we need to really you know, be these tender truth tellers. I guess you could say, and it's okay to look a young girl or a young boy in the eyes and say, hey, I don't know why destruction marched into your life. I don't know why devastation is in your life. I truly don't know. Um, I don't have the answers, but I think as adults, because we've conquered, we have the right mindset to be able to confidently say to this kid, uncertainty is okay. There's going to be a lot of problems in life that we won't have the answers to, but we need to be okay with that. We need to be okay with those uncertainties, and I think that maybe, dare I say, that it's almost in those most confusing moments of our lives, we remember the lessons the most. So being able to actually now connect with these kids and say, we won't have all the answers to all the problems but just to embrace that uncertainty, which will provide a sense of humility, and I think humility will build character in the end as well. Now, I just want to remind you all, I am the moderator, but if there's something that has really touched on you today and you want to ask a question, go over to Slido. I've got mine open, so I'll be able to see your question. I promise I'll ask as many as we possibly can, but I really do, as we're talking, want to get all of you involved because we are really sitting, I mean, I had the great fortune of, you know, sitting with all of these women last night, so I got to ask a lot of questions, but if you are ready to take part, I'm listening. Uh, Belle, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the idea of equality versus equity in how we empower others, women or men. What, what do you see as that difference between equality and equity? Yeah, I, I actually think it's a very important difference. Uh, I think it's a critical difference in that I think we all know the definition of equality versus equity. I mean, equal is we all start from the same start line if we're running the race. Equity is that start line changes based on who you are, what your experiences are, what your physical, mental capabilities are, and we, we ensure that everybody has an equal opportunity to start that race. Um, so equality is one step, but um, and it, and equality can be a policy, but equity is a value. And equity is something we as individuals and as leaders bring to the table. So when we're sitting in that decision-making room, whether it's you know at a school or it's in a boardroom, it's always thinking about what is the position of that other person? What are they bringing to the table? And how do I get them to a place of equity so that they have the best opportunity to contribute to whatever this conversation is that we're having or contribute the skills and gifts that they have to bring to that table. Um, the conversation is so much more rich when we allow for equity, and I will say that often people who are seeking equity are often fear it, and I, you mentioned this word, and I think it's an important word, Cam, is fear, because I think we all fear equity because it's different. And so we're constantly trying to push people to the quality line and not to the equity line because we fear about where that's going to take us. It will take us to a better place. There is no question. 
each one of you if um, there was a time when you thought, oh, am I going in the right direction? And who kind of helped you rally or how did you rally forward? Because we really, you know, want to leave tonight sort of talking about that, how did you rally forward? Yeah. I have so many people that have pushed me forward. I know that how is not only. I had so many opportunities presented because they seen the need for self-defense or they, they seen other people that um, would definitely like grasp this. And I've also had like my uncle, he was like this businessman that, you know, seen something that I, you know, that I wanted to achieve and he, you know, made sure that I followed through and everything. That was actually one of the things he told me is like, no matter what you do, just make sure you finish what you start. And that was something that always stuck with me. And so, you know, you can have all these great ideas, but if you don't follow through and you don't do, um, you know, see it to the end, it, you know, you don't really get to succeed and feel that great feeling. Um, but I've always had, I feel like how has been like a community instead of just me. Um, yeah, so there's always been these relationships made everywhere, like right across Canada. We've traveled across Canada in August, and we've, we've reached over 5,000 women and girls, and it's just, it feels so amazing to be able to, you know, know that some of them even want to become POW instructors, and that to me is like, yes, like, this is what's going to happen next, you know, so, I love it. <laughs> to honor our missing and murdered indigenous women. There's um, a lot of inequality in um, justice systems. Uh, there's system, systematic racism. There's so much violence. Um, and I mean, that's one of the reasons why how it exists, you know, and that's, it's unfortunate, but it, it is one of the reasons that um, I keep doing what I'm doing. And hearing the stories of the young women and girls and the things that they have endured is um, really, really important for those voices to be heard and for things to change. So, so the last footage you saw was the end of the gala. Uh, the panel was last. It was amazing. I'm heading home. My makeup kit, all my stuff. It was amazing. Um, Hearing these women speak was just amazing. And not just Shayna, every single person that was sitting up there had so much intellectual opinion. Women, women supporting women, like that's really what it is. And they even talked about supporting men, like all walks of life, you guys. It was absolutely amazing. And I honestly hope to be sitting up there speaking on the panel one day because just for, just for success event, is amazing like I have there's so many words I have for it like honestly it was awesome